How's it going, fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC. And today we are going over a lot of fun stuff. Look at all these little Saudis we have here. Guys, I want to go over a whole bunch of gear today. We're going to talk a lot about the Sodbuster model in general. We are going to talk about this flashlight that I tested last month. Do a quick little review on this because there's not too much to say about it, but it's awesome. And we're going to talk about a new little side piece that came in yesterday. Okay. Some very cool stuff. But the main topic is going to be Sodbusters. These are really little hot commodity lately and I want to go over some differences between the the thinner ones that case offers the thicker ones that they offer some modding options okay and then obviously GEC's version Great Eastern Cutlery's version the bullnose look at how cool this is so um let me clear this out a little bit here and we're going to go over some some differences between the different models here um obviously these two are from josh these are some custom ones but basically case offers a few different varieties of the sawbuster junior so we have the plastic or delrin covered one okay and this is going to be your cheapest option this literally just has plastic covers uh, they're typically like, you know, $39. You can get them anywhere, including like tractor supply or hardware stores. Like you can really find these just about anywhere. I don't necessarily recommend these because the fit and finish is generally horrific. However, if you want to get one of these to modify, it's your best bet because you're not wasting money um, for more premium materials when you're not going to use them anyway, right? So if you want to upgrade your Case Sodbuster Jr. and do something like this, I would highly recommend picking up one of these plastic covered ones because you can basically just take the pieces, all of the parts out of it, and have someone modify it for you like that. So although I don't recommend these necessarily, they're really good for parts. This one isn't, like, the worst I've ever seen. I mean, the centering is pretty bad because it's actually non-existent. But that doesn't bother me too much. Um, this is just kind of a, a beater. But the blade is very pretty. Look at that. That's stunning. It's got that carbon steel. But really cheap and easy to pick up if you want to send it off to someone to get modified. So um, these two right here have been recovered by Josh Francis over at Knife Guy Mods. He's one of my best friends. And these are some really nice recovers that he did for me. This one is called the Blue Jane. And this is in blue denim micarta with white liners. We do have some gapping there, but that's pretty typical because the parts from Case aren't always on par so this one has a gap throughout there but it doesn't affect anything and then we also have the slater model so this is in vintage cross cut micarta with orange liners really beautiful this one is in stainless steel he implemented a half stop on both of these as you can see they don't come like that from case, but he can modify them to have a half stop if you wish. I really like it. This one has it too. And this one is in stainless. Really beautiful. So if you're looking for a Sodbuster Jr. and, you know, the, the Delrin doesn't really tickle your fancy and maybe you want it a little thicker than the more premium ones that Case offers. Modifying is an awesome idea and you can pick them up really cheap, okay? I do just wanna mention, I said a little while ago in a video that the stainless steel and the carbon steel that Case offer, they, they're, not too, um, they're not too different in terms of performance. I want to take that back and I'm going to go more in detail about that on a different video that is dedicated to that topic. But I've been really using these a lot and sharpening them. And the carbon steel definitely outperforms the stainless if you give it, you know, five good sharpenings. 
um, I'm really starting to notice a difference now. So I, like I said, I'm going to make a dedicated video about that, but I'm really enjoying the carbon steel from Case because it's actually a great performer and I feel that it really does well over the, the true sharp stainless once you um, really get past that factory edge. But some beautiful offerings from Josh over at Knife Guy Mods. You can find him on Instagram and DM him there. Um, these are some really cool models that he offers and he does a whole bunch of other stuff so please check him out. But Generally, these will be about as thick as the Delrin covers, okay? So, really filling in the hand. It feels really nice. They're also about as thick as the thicker bone covers that Case offers as well. So, this is the Smoky Valley, uh, what is it, Sunrise or something from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, this is kind of like their signature jig bone model that they do with Smoky Mountain and this one has the thicker covers so these are bone so are these and you can tell there's a very distinct difference okay so if you want something that fills the hand more definitely go with one of the thicker uh, covered models but again very very similar this one may be a, a hair thicker but they, they just fill the hand really well. If you're looking to have this as a main blade, I would go with the, the thicker covers. This one's a little beauty. Look at that. These are awesome EDC knives. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's look at the thinner one, just in case that is of interest to you. Because some people want, you know, as thin as they can get. So this is from, is it Knife Center? Knives Ship Free? I can't remember. This is the Peach Seed Jig Bone Mahogany Case Sodbuster Jr. in carbon steel. I was on a wait list for this for quite some time. This is a really, really nice one. Um, I know some people got doozies. I believe Michael Richter is someone who picked one of these up and his was just like trashed when he got it. But mine is actually really nice. Beautiful fit and finish, which seems to be a trend on these thinner ones. I really noticed that a lot of the thinner Sodbuster Juniors have great fit and finish, uh, uh, you know, compared to the thicker ones. I know Michael got a doozy, but um, for me, I've had really good luck with these. This one is just absolutely gorgeous and you know paper thin carry really really like this one obviously you you know always have to put your own edge on them because the edge that it comes with is garbage but that's a great one um let's just pull in a couple slips here real quick too before i forget these two are from michael richter this is the nine slip and this is a horween leather slip but if you want to protect your knife these are a great option I really like putting my blue denim micarta one in here. That is awesome. Michael makes the world's best leather slips, so go hit him up. He also has a YouTube channel, Richter Knives. I will link him down in the description below. We want him doing this full time by the end of the year, so please fill up his books. He does awesome leather work, tons of options, and he's a really great guy. I also have this slip here from Hitch and Timber, and this is a... It offers something a little different. So listen to this. This is really interesting to me. This is this almost reminds me of like Kydex. It's so hard, but check this out. See how that clicks in there? It you know this leather isn't soft and supple like this. Like this is very soft and and um, it's just so supple. This is not. This kind of like formed to the knife. And it literally feels like Kydex almost. Um, I did wax it, so I'm sure that, you know, impacts the whole experience a little bit. But it, it literally clicks. It, like, makes an audible sound. It's really wild. So if you're looking for something a little more um, heavy-duty like that, Hitch and Timber makes great stuff as well. Um, I really like their slips. This is technically supposed to be for a Victorinox uh pioneer i think 
but it fits a Sodbuster Jr. So check them out as well. Really, really great people. But yeah, um, let me clear these out. And then obviously, you know, you can get a, a Sodbuster type model from GEC. Granted, they're never really available. You have to get them on the secondary and the price is probably going to be marked up. But if you're looking for the ultimate Sodbuster experience, GEC offers that through the Bulmos. These are really incredible knives. You could absolutely use these as a main blade. These really fill the hand. This is definitely like a heavy duty main blade. You do have the half stop. Very snappy. Like, these are pretty hardcore for slip joints. This one is in natural micarta here. So this is pretty grippy. Really beautiful. And then this one is in green linen micarta that has been polished and kind of glossed. So this has no grip at all. This is very smooth and glassy. Absolutely awesome. But these are really great options. Um, these are, you know, very expensive. And like I said, not really available other than on the secondary and you're going to have that price markup so if you if you've been longing for a gec bullnose and you just can't find one or you just don't have the money or whatever i really do suggest picking up a a sodbuster jr and having josh recover it that way too you can pick what steel you want because you can you know case offers the true sharp the chrome vanadium the carbon steel and the 1095 so you can pick whichever one you want and then send it to him to recover and you basically have a custom sodbuster jr that you created and you're not you're still not going to be paying as much as a gec bull knows even though yours is fully custom so just something to think about you know these have the half stop uh josh can put those in so there really isn't like a massive difference to be honest um he can also generally make the the quality pretty darn close to gec like this is a, a beautiful example of incredible fit and finish from josh this one has some gaps but notice how it's using the case brass liner that's why because it was just so warped he could not get it straight so this one uh has that gap but if he if you're fine with not having the brass liner and just running it on g10 or something he can really make that seamless for you like you're seeing in a gec and then you still have the half stop just like a gec really nice snappy action like a gec and it's completely custom so really just think about that guys if you're if you're jones and for a bull nose and it's just not working for you i i highly suggest checking out josh francis at knife guy mods on instagram because you can really kind of create your own here and i've been using this every single day this month and it's an absolute pleasure to use really really and look at that centering man like what the heck that is amazing look at that slater blue jane check it out. We're going to have more coming. I have something really exciting that he's working on right now that is going to blow you guys' minds. Another um, variation. So really, really cool. I'll give you a hint. It's called The Wednesday. So use your imagination and think of what that may look like, what color scheme that may be. Might be a little spooky, right? <laughs> that one's going to be really exciting. So I'll have that on here as soon as it comes in, but he's working on it right now. Um, now that we've talked about the Sodbusters, let's go real quick over this Phoenix PD25R. I had the original version, the PD25. It's a fantastic light. It was not rechargeable and it looked a little different th than this. I still have it, but this is the updated version where you can charge it. It has the little mode button here, which the old one does have that as well. Um, so there's really not a ton of a difference other than this being rechargeable. But this is a really nice light. It has a couple of modes. I'm not gonna blind you guys and turn it on because I hate when people do that, but um, battery life is incredible. This is a very small, compact light. If we bring in a Sodbuster Jr. for size, they're the exact same size. It's definitely a little chunky, but not too bad at all. 
really really nice flashlight i i think i only recharged it like twice during the entire month of testing it and i used it every single day it's a very very good light i like this one in the colder months too because if you're wearing gloves this is a more fulfilling um flashlight to use with gloves on so i i really like this it's hard to find um good american-made flashlights that are not going to cost you an arm and a leg so this is an option if you just can't afford a surefire or a mod light these are made in china but they're very very nice lights i've never had a phoenix flashlight fail on me ever and i've done some really messed up stuff with them so definitely check phoenix out um they don't know who i am i have no affiliation with them i just actually really like their products although i don't like where they're made and this is a maverick bead here from uh greg he does custom beads so that's a really cool one but i think this just looks awesome let's go over something really exciting though that came in yesterday so you guys know I am a massive fan of Archie over at Nice Guy Machine Company. He makes these Be No One beads that I use on everything. He makes all of these pry bars that you see all over the internet. And of course, Jesse, one of my best friends, he picked up the side piece for me. This is the last one that I needed to complete my full size pry bar collection from Archie because I have the Mr. Nice Bar. This one is chocolate anodized that he did for me a really long time ago when he first started these. And I already had the Plain Jane Bar. So the only one that I needed to complete my collection was the side piece. And Jesse, of course, got one for me on the, le the latest drop. And this thing is awesome. So this has the pocket clip, the lanyard hole, all the works and this thing is awesome. It's way beefier than I thought it would be, and not weight-wise, it's very, very light, but it's just um, wider than the other two. So it's really robust. It's not thicker, it's just wider. So this thing is just sick. You know, it has more surface coverage in terms of the scraping head. Uh, you still get the bottle opener, the wrench, all that good stuff, the removable pocket clip. But I just wanted to show it to you guys because um, I don't see very many people that have all three of his full-size pry bars. It's really hard to get them. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. That's what the whole collection looks like when you have all three of the full-size ones. He also makes the lady finger, which is a small, like, Kirdashi style um, pry bar and it doesn't have the bottle opener. I have that too, but Nikki has it. Um, but yeah, that's what all three look like when they're all together. I don't recommend one over the other because they're all fantastic. I am really excited that I have all three of these and the little Ultim beads to go with them. This slip does carry the pry bars. So this is the Three Sons leather slip. I've been testing this, it's fantastic. It goes right in there. And this is the Bad Goods leather slip specifically made for the Nice Bar. Really nice, but I can't speak on it too much because I just got it yesterday. But that's it, guys. That's all I have for you. So um, I hope that you enjoyed that. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. And I will see you on the next video.